action figure toy lines are always filled with amazing heroes. And it's usually the first purchase of kids and collectors. Everybody wants a hero. And there are some heroes out there that work really well for what are called variants, or what the industry calls a character refresh. Collectors call them variants, but the industry just simply notes this as a refresh. And sometimes these refreshes look like the traditional look, and other times they're bright and orange and stand out on shelf. I have done videos about this in the past, and I've also talked a lot about how certain brands work better for variants versus others. You can't just, you know, make Papa Smurf green or purple and expect him to sell. Papa Smurf is not a character that works well for variants. Versus something like Iron Man, well, he's a character all about having hundreds and hundreds of different types of armor. So you can make very, very toyetic versions of Iron Man in different colors that kids are going to like, so Iron Man can have adventures in space or underground. Other toy lines, you know, this strategy eh, works a little bit, but not as well. You can, you know, try to squeeze in variants, especially for collector lines, but kids tend to want the hero the way they want their hero. All right, so where am I going with all of this? I recently made a video about this particular Batman variant. It's called Tech Shield Batman. You can definitely check out the video here, see the link above. But in summary, this was the Batman toy that first introduced the toy world to the idea of what I call kind of the wacky color variant. Yes, gold is not that wacky, especially in uh, you know hindsight of today, but at the time, this was very groundbreaking. Batman had never been in this color before. People have pointed out in the comments section that you know this was not the first variant, and of course it was not the first variant in Toydom. But if you look at things like Masters of the Universe, all of the variants of He-Man, both in the Vintage line, 2000X, well, not maybe not, well, a little 2000X, but especially the Vintage line, um, you know, and Skeletor, they were all in the same color scheme. So while they had different armor, Skeletor is still in purple armor with some highlights. So it's not a wacky color, if you will, something that's off the color palette of a traditional Batman figure. Looking at the assortment that Tech Shield Batman shipped in, all of the other Batmans in the assortment are either black for the movie, or you have the token blue, which is even done in dark blue, and you have that one gold Batman really standing out amongst all the others. And again, obviously, this did not create the idea of a variant. That would probably go to G.I. Joe that was taking the same soldier and dressing him as different characters. So in no way am I saying that Tech Shield Batman invented the variant. Lots of people were doing that. He-Man was doing that. But again, same color scheme. So let's talk about a color scheme. The other thing about variants is that kids and collectors, of course, want the traditional-looking version of the hero first. They're not going to go for the gold Batman or the purple Batman or the green Batman unless they already have Batman that looks like he stepped out of the movie or a comic book or a video game, etc. All of those what would be called wacky colors, or the toy industry would call them themed refreshes, come about because, well, toy companies need to make money. And obviously, a child is going to go for a traditional Batman first. That's why even this wave that had Tech Shield Batman is overloaded with traditional Batmans. I mean, what, one, two, three, four, five? Especially, you know, counting the Bruce Wayne, because he can dress up as Batman and still look like black Batman. It's not like, uh, you know, when he puts on that cape and cowl, he suddenly turns into a Batman in a wacky color. So this assortment, when it was shipping to stores, included lots of ways of getting Batman right off of the movie screen in his new black outfit for the 89 movie. Again, the Bruce Wayne figure, you slip on the cape and cowl there, and it's still black Batman, black suit Batman. On a, you know, Bruce Wayne just sort of almost has a head swap in this case. It's, yeah, it's a Bruce Wayne figure, but it's really Batman in a black outfit. The color variants didn't come till later on. In fact, the wave after Tech Shield Batman started to be loaded with them. You had orange Batmans and green Batmans and white Batmans. And they were all themed for a specific mission that Batman needs to go on, and that explains why he has a colorful suit. When he goes into the Arctic to battle 
I don't know, Mr. Freeze, polar bears, penguins, he needs white armor. It makes sense, especially for a child. So the reason these variants exist is because toy companies need to sell lots of toys. They can't just sell one toy to a kid or a collector. That's not good for business. And if a toy company wants to sell multiple Batman to the same customer, well, you need customer retention. And it shouldn't be a shock that this is the goal of toy companies, to sell multiple products to the same customer. Yes, you can always try to get a new customer, but that costs way more than trying to earn the second purchase from an existing customer from a business standpoint. That's kind of business school 101. And obviously, toy companies are businesses first and have objectives that are going to lead to profit. They need to sell toys. They need to make a good margin off of these toys. And by redecoing, say, Batman as the example here, you increase the odds that you are going to be able to resell a figure to a child. Because children love colors. Children are attracted to colors. It's why you see things like play sets with tons and tons of color in them. Children like this. While they're, of course, going to want Batman in his traditional colors as their initial purchase, all of these color variants are about the second purchase. They're not, no one's starting their collection with Arctic Batman or, you know, sewer running green suit scuba Batman. I mean, of course, there's going to be some people who do. I'm not discounting that. But there are plenty of traditional looking Batman out there to meet this need. And the whole point of redecoing a hero in a themed color for, say, you know, a specific mission to the Arctic or inside of a volcano or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, is to get that second purchase. All right. So what about villains? What about the bad guys? This is something adult collectors point out a lot. And it's because as adult collectors, and I'm included in that, I'm a lifelong adult collector, we like to have full collections. We like to have complete collections, collect them all, and that includes having the bad guys. So a common complaint with adult collectors is that not enough bad guys ship in toy assortments. Yes, kids obviously like bad guys too, and collectors are always saying, well, why are the bad guys always so short-packed? Why is there, you know, one Joker figure for every Batman? Or this is a perfect example. In this Imagine X uh, five-pack, you get three heroes, a Batman, two secondary heroes, and two villains, not Batman versus, say, four villains, or three Batman and one villain, or, you know, something like that. This is a perfectly created pack, and the reason is kids see the hero of a toy line, and, you know, of in content too, but when they play out their own adventures, and this is the key here, they see that hero as being able to take on all the villains. So, you don't need real, you know, tons of different heroes to team up with. You just need that one core hero, and maybe that hero needs to have a special suit to do this if he's battling in the Arctic or in a volcano. But the way children play is they will have one main hero take on, you know, if you will, all of their villain figures. And 80% of toy lines... I've said <laughs> repetitively almost, it's like my pull string, are to kids. And the villain, or I'm sorry, the hero figure doesn't necessarily have to fight villains from that franchise. Batman can fight Skeletor and Cobra Commander, or even Spider-Man, just as much as he can fight the Joker for children. He, the children don't see villains as only going up against one hero that they might encounter in the content. So... Everyone kind of lives in one toy box, in one world, all heroes. So, you know, even Iron Man could fight the Joker, or, you know, Spider-Man could fight Lex Luthor. But at the end of the day, it's all about the heroes for kids. The, the heroes can also fight dinosaurs, or robots, or, you know, a book, or a tree. You know, the way children play with toys is they don't necessarily need... In, you know, an actual villain for the hero to fight. It's all about the hero's adventures because they see themselves as the hero. It, it's an avatar for their imagination and for them to see themselves in play, which is why, you know, you see that one Joker figure in the back in this assortment with four heroes or this assortment here. You see two different Batman, a Nightwing, a Robin, and one Joker figure. 
because this is the way children play. They don't need a ton of villains. Yes, one hero can take on a ton of villains, but it can, it can be, you know, over and over again. And this is also why you don't see as many secondary heroes. I mean, yes, you do see secondary heroes, but it really is all about the one hero for kids. And this is exactly why you see case assortments like this. And I see adult collectors, you know, a lot of time, can, you know, I don't want to say complaining, but pointing out that, you know, villains and secondary heroes are short-packed or that they don't make enough of them. But the reason is because this is not the way children play and why cho and the way children, you know, you will acquire figures. This is a perfect, you know, this giant robot bat toy is Batman, you know, is an avatar of Batman. Yeah, you've got a little Batman on top, but this could battle a Joker action figure just as much as an action, a, you know, real action figure could. It's the way children play. So to kind of bring it all together, first purchase for a kid, most of the time, 90% of the time, some exceptions, your traditional hero, looking the way they do in the content. Stepping right off the screen, right off the comic book page, happy child. Secondary purchase, variant of hero. First you're going to get the hero, then you're going to get another version of the hero. If the toy line permits that, if you will, if it's a toy line that begets doing different versions of the hero based on the DNA of the property. Third purchase, second hero, it's usually sidekick. Yes, one hero should be able to take everyone on, but children are way more interested in good guys than they are bad guys. So a secondary hero is almost going to be your third purchase. And then finally, your fourth purchase is going to be the villain. And this is why villains are, if you will, short-packed or not produced as heavily, because you really only need one villain in there. That's the way kids play. And they can, you know, dinosaurs and robot toys that are, you know, just from other lines can be villains for, say, Batman as well. And this is why something like this here is a perfect assortment. Two Batmans, two secondary heroes, one villain. This works. This sells. And that is why you see case packs like this, because children are the main user of toys. I hope this clarified. I hope uh, this was a good explanation of why heroes sell a little better than villains and why you see the case packs you do. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe and give it a like. It tells YouTube to share it with others. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.